Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about the Epiphone Uptown Cat Guitar. This is another one that's part of Epiphone's 2020 Originals Collection, and it's a new take on the Cat series. So you might be familiar with something called the Wild Cat or the Alley Cat. They are kind of, you know, vintage Epiphone ES-inspired guitars, whereas the Uptown Cat ups the ante even further. Because the old models were actually chambered mahogany bodies with maple tops. They were just kind of given that faux semi-hollow look to them. They're very similar in style to like Gibson's Midtown series if you're familiar with those. If not, you can check out this video where I explain all of that. The Midtown series is not my favorite guitar, so when I picked this one up, I was very pleased to find out that this is a true ES guitar. Now what that means is it has that maple poplar maple sandwich of woods that create not only the top, but also the back and the sides here. And you've got a little bit of a carve to it, and that's how they're able to do that. But at the same time, it's like an ES-335. It's got that center block for increased sustain as well as reducing feedback. So at a price point of $5.99 and you get a beautiful looking guitar with all these really nice attributes, they've really created quite the interesting instrument here. We'll go over the full details and specs on the workbench, but one thing I do want to point out here is that they've kept this really vintage inspired, just like the last ones. Pretty much all the new Epiphones have this Kalamazoo style headstock. That's not actually new on this model, but you know, it's still kind of a new thing. But let's talk about this logo real quick. You don't see that too often. Epiphone used this style of badge logo from about 58 to 61, and collectors call it the bikini logo because you know, it looks like a pair of bikini bottoms. So it's a super vintage-y looking guitar. You've got the mini humbuckers. And to be honest, yesterday when I was going to get this out of the box, I was under the mentality that I was just gonna list it for sale. This was actually the very first 2020 Epiphone that was delivered to me, and it just kind of sat around, fell to the wayside. But as soon as I opened that box, it rekindled my interest to do this whole review and demo. And I think it really comes down to the finish that this thing is offered in. So you get four color options. There's a sapphire blue metallic, which is this beautiful blue color all over the instrument. But that's the only color that does not have a gold back. That's right. Despite this red one called ruby red metallic being red on top, it still has the gold back inside. You know, it's kind of an interesting look. Reminds you of like an emperor. I think that's why I eventually chose this one because I had a hard time choosing between ruby red metallic and emerald green metallic. That one kind of has like an Irish elven fairy princess dress link tinkerbell type vibe to it and i'm not sure if it's fair to say if the topaz gold metallic has a gold back when the top is also gold but you know it kind of falls within the same category so if you prefer multicolor things you're going to want to choose between the red and green but if you like things being more of just you know a basic color all over you're going to want to go for the gold or the blue one so now that we understand these guitars, what was my first impression of this thing? You know, taking it out of the box right away, it's the finish. It really does grab you. You can check out the unboxing video if you want to see me seeing it for the first time, but it's just such a nice metallic finish and it pairs really well with this gold hardware. This is a really impressive instrument, but at the same time, it still kind of has that cheap-ish looking vibe. I think it has something to do with the F holes for me. They're not quite stylized, right? The next thing I noticed picking this up though, it's kind of a heavy guitar. I was expecting this to be a, you know, like seven pounds or less. Maybe it's just a weight distribution thing here. We'll have to check that out on the workbench. But overall, first impressions, very happy with it, but let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs to learn some more. Inside the Uptown Cat, let's go ahead and take a look at these specs. So these are Epiphone's Pro Bucker Mini Humbuckers. So it's not a full-sized humbucker, that's why they kind of look a little bit smaller. And they're stylized after a Firebird pickup, so they don't have any type of pole pieces. And in the bridge pickup position, it is also a mini humbucker. I know that one actually has a mini humbucker humbucker combination, the other one's like dog-eared P90s. So not only is it an evolution on the style of the instrument, it's also an evolution in the types of pickups that they're using. Not really anything too fancy to look at, they're just marked Epiphone USA. Let's go ahead and grab these readings though. Bridge position, 7.82k ohms. Neck position, we're looking at about the same. And the middle position here looks like 3.94. But inside our pickup cavities, we can actually see that Epiphone is telling the truth. It does have a maple center block right here. And you can see the maple poplar maple sandwich on top of that. 
So it is indeed constructed the way an ES-335 is. But that also means we do not have back plates on this one like those other ones. So they have to fish all the electronics through the cavities. You could check out this video when I had to do that to an old arch top. <laughs> it was fun in hindsight, but not fun at the time. But you're also gonna notice that this bridge pickup has this little plastic ring. You can't actually even remove that if you wanted to because it's trapped by the wire. So it's always attached to you know prevent you from doing something silly. That's just to give it more height so you can actually get it to where it needs to be for your tones. I know the ES-295 is popular with those. But it's basically just like a regular plastic pickup ring. And inside this cavity, you get the serial number right there and your QR code from the factory. As far as the bridge goes, it's your standard lock tone from Epiphone. But here's what our tailpiece is. So this little trapeze thing can actually move up and down. That helps you string it. So the ball end of the strings just go there. They secure, and then that just kind of naturally tilts to the right position. Trapeze tailpieces look really cool, but the most annoying thing about them is the strings will ring because there's enough area for them to vibrate. So if you ever buy one of these, you're picking and you hear a high-pitched ping, 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 it's this string going on. So I finally made myself a little homemade mute. So if you see that in the playing demo, that's what that's doing. It's making it so it doesn't annoy me. But what's going on with our controls here? There's three knobs down here and one up here. Is it like neck volume? bridge volume, and then your tones? No. So this actually has three separate volume controls. So this is your neck volume, this is your bridge volume, and this is a master volume. So a lot of these jazz cat guys, apparently they will be very finicky where their volumes are for each of these. So once they set that, they might not want to have to roll that off when they don't want any of the volume. to. Be. So that's what this is for. They can roll that off. But what I found really interesting is when you're using this guitar with distortion, because you can roll this almost all the way off and then have this one really low. And even though your distortion pedal is like all the way cranked up, you still have that clean tone. So even when this one's more at like a seven or an eight, you still have just like a slightly overdriven tone. And then you can use this to really crank in the gain if you want to. So at first I was confused, like why would you want that? But then it's like, okay, yeah, you can actually do some stuff with that. And then this is just a master tone. As far as some QC things and other things that I could have done better, you can definitely see those wires. Now, to be fair, there is a little sticky pad up here that secures to the bottom side of this, and it had fallen down, and I just kind of stuck it there. So maybe it was supposed to be over here so it wasn't quite as visible. So they tried to do some wire management in there. So as far as things that they could have done better, the red rides up on that gold neck right here on the edge. That pretty much happens on all Epiphones, but it's really striking on this one because you got a gold and red difference going on. And here's something peculiar about this one. It kind of looks like some scratches, but what I honestly think those little black lines are right here is someone's hair got in the finish when it was finished over because they're definitely under the finish and they're not finish checks. So, you know, that, that's kind of interesting. And that does happen, believe it or not. I remember there was a Sweetwater demo model of a Gibson Explorer that had that phenomenon. And another paint thing is you can see that the red kind of flows over onto the binding F hole. And it just takes what would have otherwise been a really clean look and kind of makes it look a little bit sloppy. It'd be nice if my camera could focus on these areas, but eh, I'm doing the best I can. You can also see it like on the bottom. So it's not the uh, most prestigious looking guitar when you really get up close. For example, this one actually has a little bit of a dip in the finish right there. And you can kind of see some more of what I'm talking about. So does a few small paint blotches really ruin this guitar? I don't think so. And the toggle switch on this thing actually has one of those rubber grommet things on here. It's kind of a vintage looking spec on these guys. I'm not really sure what the function of that is for, but what really bugs me is this is off center. So you got a little bit more rubber up here than you do back there. Not quite as apparent in photos and video, but in person, you can definitely tell it. It kind of bugs me. But check that out, multiply binding along the edges. But moving on from our body, we have a mahogany neck with an ebony fretboard. So 22 medium jumbo frets. You've got the acrylic block inlays. This is actually looking pretty good. And this was that first Epiphone I got before all those other ones kind of had some fretting issues. I mean, this one actually was set up pretty well. I think the intonation needs to be dialed in a little bit better, but as far as, you know, playability out of the box, we're all good here. And here's that new bone self-lubricating nut. I kept telling you guys from the factory, they do have a little bit of pencil lead in them. And I stopped myself before I added more so I could show you guys that. Scale length is the typical 24 and 3 quarter inches. First fret neck depth, 1.69. And by the 12th fret, really wide, 2.1. First fret neck depth, 0.87. 
and 0.96 by the 12. So it's a full feeling neck, but not like too big. I would actually still classify this as more of a 60s feel. And face of the headstock, if you tore everything off, this is what it would look like. That's what's kind of cool about this. If you don't like the Epiphone branding, you could take this little bikini logo, take it to some machine shop, and they could custom make you one that has your name on it instead. And then you could put it on there and say, hey, it's my own custom made guitar type thing. This is a cool little feature right here. It's some sort of a, a tin metal. But unfortunately, when I unscrewed this, you can see the paint actually chipped on it a little bit. So that tells you maybe not the most durable coating right there. And to be honest, I think the truss rod cover also having an E on this is a little bit overkill. They probably could have got away with just a blank one. But inside there sleeps your truss rod and you can see the mahogany neck. Moving on to the back now. It's a complete gold show. So no control plates back here at all. So it's not like those other ones that at least have, you know, one right here, right there to help you fish stuff through if you want to upgrade it. You would have to do, you know, the traditional way. And it, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. But it is bound on both sides, top and back. They kind of have to do that with the way that they construct these. But notice, no output jack plate. Quite a bold move right there. One strap button on the bottom, and then you've got another one on the top there. And the back binding is also multi-ply. Moving up the back of the neck here, not too much going on here. Just your QC inspected sticker as well as handcrafted in China. And you can see our gold Grover tuners, but you're gonna notice, no serial number. How peculiar. They actually have that inside the guitar in one of those little stickers, just like an ES-335. And if that were to wear off, thankfully this one still has the QR code that would have the serial number there. So technically, in theory, it would be very easy to steal one of these from someone because you could just remove that and remove that and no one would ever be able to know what serial number this ever was. So if you live in a high crime community, you might want to brand it something of your own just in case. But, you know, just some thoughts. As far as the weight goes, seven pounds, 3.1 ounces. This must be so off balance because it feels like it weighs at least eight or nine pounds. It's a chunky guitar despite that looking pretty light and it's all in the neck, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and hear how it sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
we know all about the Uptown Cat. What are my final thoughts on this thing? Well, you know, it's very big and full sounding. I was impressed by the way this thing came back in the recordings. I knew when I strummed it a little bit and decided to go through with the full review and demo that this was a really nice guitar, but I'm sad to say it is ridiculously neck heavy. So that's a little bit of a letdown because you always kind of have to support the neck a little bit. Now you can get more gripping straps and it's not necessarily a huge chore to keep it in position. So it's not like a really bad SG or anything, but if you hate neck dive at all, you're probably gonna wanna pass on this or move the strap button to another location. But as far as the way it played, I thought it was pretty good. I think we have a little bit of intonation issues within the middle. But if that's the worst thing that I can say about this, I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, some of those fine details like we were talking about on the workbench, like the way that the F holes are finished or some of that finish up along the neck, those fine details could have been done a little bit better. But at the price point, you really are getting a nice budget guitar that has a very upscale vibe to it, all that binding. I think it's worth picking up if you're interested in a semi-hollow instrument that's constructed in a traditional way. So would I personally pay $5.99 for one of these brand new for a personal collection? I'm kind of on the fence. Pick one of these up used in a couple of years. As it seems the Cat series usually settles around 400 to 500 bucks used after a couple of years. And at that price, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer on these. I like the uh, jazzy rockabilly vibe. So let's go ahead and check this out under blacklight before we say goodbye. Now this is kind of a cool sight. The binding glows, but nothing else really does. So, so that really lets you see those F holes. That's pretty cool. Then the back, it looks like the gold finish glows a little bit, but not tons. Kind of the same phenomenon back here. Nothing really too much to go over on a brand new guitar as always, but just kind of cool nonetheless. Let's go ahead and check out the original box. Unfortunately, even at $5.99, you don't get a hard shell case. You just get one of these boxes, which will get you by. They're pretty decent for these style of instruments, not so much explorers. But besides the box, you also get a little bit of case candy, which includes an Epiphone poster, Epiphone sticker, some warranty information, and some other hang tags. But likely, if you buy this at a store, you won't even get this box. Chocolateites. Thank you for tuning in today. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this particular Uptown Cat, you can check it out on my Reverb shop. I'll leave a link in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.